putting them through the rim. Man, I miss seeing that version of Zion Williamson, but the wait is almost over. And for more on that, we are joined by Pelicans reporter Andrew Lopez. Now, Andrew, you were on the show yesterday and said that last night was going to be, speaking in the context of yesterday, the first time Zion would be able to put his full skills on display. Now, how did it go? Well, unfortunately, the media wasn't there, but we, uh, I think he did maybe put a couple of people through the rim last night. Uh, so we weren't there. We did talk to his coaches and teammates today, though, about how it went. I got to be honest with you. Dude looks good, and, and uh, you know, it's going to take everybody time to adjust to him. It's going to take him time to adjust to everybody, but we're, uh, I mean, it's hard not to be impressed. That's my first time actually seeing him, you know, in uniform and playing. So it didn't look like he'd been out of the game. So I'll tell you that much. Strong, very, very strong and also ready to play. I, I will say that. But uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. He looked amazing. His strength, his speed. He, you know, he dominated the, the, the scrimmage pretty much. He didn't even realize it. But in the locker room, you know, talking about it afterwards, I was like, did you know, like, you didn't even miss a shot? And, you know, it was the first time. He didn't even realize it until I pointed it out. But, no, he uh, he didn't miss a shot. He looks like the same wrecking ball we all know and love. So, so the other thing, uh, well, we didn't get to see it last night. The media will get their first chance to see Zion on Saturday at an open practice at the Smoothie King Center. But I did ask Trey Murphy, Pelicans forward, was there a moment last night when you kind of felt that, okay, this is he's back for real? And he said it was. He said during the scrimmage, Najee Marshall, Pelicans forward, had the unfortunate task of having to guard Zion last night. And Trey said he's trying to make a rotation. He gets just into the lane. And Zion knocked Najee so far back that he knocked Najee into Trey Murphy and knocked Trey out of the lane. He's like, he's pushing one dude and shoving another guy out of the lane. I think he's back, guys. Trey deboed him. Now in commercial break, you said the vibes were vibing. Well, everything seems like they're going well in NOLA. Thank you so much, Andrew. And uh, speaking of which, when Zion's been healthy, he's been one of the most efficient players in the game. In fact, back in 2021, he became the only player in NBA history to average 27 points per game on 60% from the field. Super impressive. So we are back here with Ramona and Perk. Okay, y'all, if everything goes right for Zion and he's healthy and available, Perk, where does he stand as a player in the league? I mean, you're talking about in first-team all-NBA caliber player. We have to remember, before Zion went out because of injuries, this man was dominating. This man, this young stud was box office. I expect him to be in the all-star game this year. I expect him to make a lot of noise. I expect him to average around 24, 25 points, 12 rebounds a night this season. Look, he looks in phenomenal shape. He's been out for uh, an entire season almost. He had his time to over the offseason to get his mind right. And guess what? He got his lettuce. <laughs> now that he secured the bag, there's nothing left for us, nothing left for him to do but go out there and hoop. And again, he got the pieces around him. That puts a smile on your face. Uh, Ramona? I mean, I think All-Star is where he, mm -hmm. that's where you think about him this year. All-NBA, he definitely has that ability, but that's a crowded field there in the All-NBA team, especially that forward position right now. Um, maybe he could nudge Pascal Siakam out of that spot, but th that's already a crowded field because there's only six forwards that can make it. The thing with Zion, though, is he just needs to still stay healthy. Don't worry about what awards you get, what All-Star games you make, what, what if he gets in the dunk contest. He just needs to get out there because and we just put those stats up there again 60 percent from the field for this young man and he is three assists mm. a game 27 points a game i mean if he's just out there he's a difference maker and especially when they used him in that sort of point forward role he really distributes the ball well he really sees the court exceptionally well and i think if he can improve it just be out there and then stay and be out there and stay on the court and then improve on the defensive end of the court the Pelicans, the sky is the limit for them. I agree because look at that, 27 points Woo. per game, 60% from the field. This is a team that went to the play-in, to the playoffs, and then you think about Zion. If he's available, he should be in the conversation if they're a playoff team to hopefully, maybe in a year or two, yeah. maybe this is a year that he becomes all NBA. That's a good goal for him instead of like the highlights and all those dunks, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, if Zion is able to get to <laughs> that level, what is the ceiling for the Pelicans this year, Perk? 
You know what? I think the conference finals. We Whoa. have to remember they were a game seven away from beating the Phoenix Suns, yeah. and they wasn't even healthy. Now this team has experience. We watched the emergence of Brandon Ingram. We watched what C.J. McCullough did for us, the team, and we watched Jose, 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 Jose <laughs> come in and do his thing, right? <laughs> Putting, picking up 94 feet. They have the pieces. They have perimeter defense. And look, let's not leave this out. When it comes down to Coach Willie Green, yeah. right, he's one of the best young coaches in the game right now. He has the respect of that locker room. They have big Valatunas down there, a walking double, 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 a uh, walking double, double that's banging down low. This team could sneak up and be in the conference finals this year, especially in the West. Well, they really have to get into the place where they can get into the place where they don't have to play so hard just to get into the play in like they did last year. Mm. I think they kind of run out of gas because of how hard they had to work just to get into the play in. And that comes down to health. I mean, that's Zion's health. That's Brandon Ingram's health. That's, you know, getting CJ McCollum, Larry Nance, those are huge pickups for them just in terms of the veteran quality that they need in that locker room. But it all comes down to health for them. I I feel like I, I'm officially banned from talking about the Pelicans because apparently it becomes coffee beans and eggs and carrots. So I'll just say that I'm very, uh, I'm very optimistic yeah. about the Pelicans this season and their leaders, uh, you mm -hmm. know, with CJ McCollum and Zion Williamson. Now, still to... Welcome back to NBA Today. I'm your girl, Chineo Gwimike, filling in for Malika Andrews. And we are just 20 days away wow. from the start of the regular season. So what better time to Let's take some it. stock on teams and see if they will improve on how they finished last season. This should be fun. Here's how the East unfolded last year. Top six teams made the playoffs automatically. Seven through ten were in the play-in tournament. And the Knicks, Wizards, Pacers, Pistons, and Magic were in the bottom five. Aww. So I want to play a little game with Ramona and Perk using some <laughs> insight from our front office insider, Bobby Marks, who is currently in Florida and in the path of Hurricane Ian. So we are wishing he and his family and all those impacted by the storm well. Absolutely. Bobby has a comprehensive article on ESPN.com on training camps that preview how teams will finish this season. So I want to use Bobby's predictions and ask both of you if his prediction is too high too low or just right well goalie so, well, 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 hold, on, hold, on, hold on this is a caveat though <laughs> i'm putting 24 seconds oh. on the shot clock can we do this can, are we good can we can we do this i don't know i talk a lot <laughs> i mean let's see i think park might hit it but he always is preaching so we'll, we'll be accepted we'll be accepted let's start yeah. with the heat here yeah, the gospel will be said amen sir here's how bobby outlined the heat he projected <laughs> them at 46 wins and being a top six team in the east possibly falling to the play-in range. There were some questions for them on Jimmy Butler's durability, playing the four, what Kyle Lowry can bring, and if no extension for Tyler Hero will be a distraction. So, Perk, starting with you first, is that too high, too mm -hmm. low, or just right? You know what I think is just right <laughs> for the simple fact, when you look at the Miami Heat, let me explain why. You can't count them out, but the East is so stacked that it's a lot of teams that are really better than them. I wouldn't say just right. I would say really that's kind of just high, to be honest with you. I don't think the Heat could, it could compare to the top couple teams that I have picked above them. The Milwaukee Bucks, the Boston Celtics. I got the Philadelphia. Dang. I know, yeah. right? I, I know. I, yeah, finish like, up. I'll give you a little overtime. That was like 14 <laughs> seconds. That was nah, like go ahead. But I, I just, I think that's too high for the Miami Heat. And I love them goons from Dade County and their exposure, but that's too high. The East we is know too you low. Do. Listen, Even though top, they finished number one, Ramona. And yeah, East. top six in the East last year, there were seven games that separated the top six in the East from, from one to six. So that's, that, they're tightly bunched together. The Miami Heat, though, they're never the favorite, but they always seem to be there. They've been in the top six in the East three out of the past ten years. Only missed the top six, the top six in the East three times in the past ten years. They're always in it. And they may not, last year I think they finished first, and we all were like, how did the Heat finish first? And we never were giving them enough credit except for Perk. You go, you always were a Heat guy, so. Mm -hmm. we'll I know the answer, right and it's one word. Actually, two words. Yep. Heat culture. Oh, okay. I know. Uh, well, mo yeah. Moving on to one of my favorite teams, the Toronto Raptors. Bobby Marks outlined them as a top six team in the East at 46 wins, saying that they have one mm -hmm. of the best starting lineups in the league. You heard me. Best starting lineups in the league. And having the best front court in the NBA with Seattle. Beckham, Anunobi, and Scotty Barnes. The backcourt is a concern as well as those starters really played heavy minutes last season. So, Ramona, 
Will they start, you know, when they when they start the season, will this be too high of a projection, too low, or is this just right? Well, my question is, is, is that starting lineup, is this team that we see for the Raptors going to be the same team at the end of the season? As we know, when Kevin Durant requested a trade, the first team that everybody thought of that has the assets to pull off a big deal would be the Toronto Raptors. So if there's a star that moves in the middle of the year, Toronto has definitely shown an appetite for getting involved in those conversations and, and definitely has the, the pieces to get it done. I always, that's another team always there Nick Nurse always has his guys in it so I think that's just about right Big Perk uh, what did you think when Bobby Mark said that they have the best front court in the East the Raptors uh, I think Bobby was tripping and here's why look we have to realize what the Cleveland Cavaliers have over there with Jer and Jared Allen and Evan Mobley I don't know if it's a better defensive tandem. And Evan Mobley, with his versatility, I mean, when I got high big things for this kid, I expect big things out of him. No disrespect to Scotty Barnes. I actually picked him to win rookie of the year. But those two, those two trees and monsters down there in Cleveland are a defensive problem for anybody. Maybe we should have put like an asterisk best collective backcourt because when you've got Giannis Antetokounmpo, when you got Joel Girl. Embiid, and you got that Cleveland Cavalier front court, I feel like that that competition is stacked. Okay, now they, these are some of Bobby's mm -hmm. Eastern Conference projections. Now the Atlanta Hawks, they have their own too. It was so cute. Check this out: Dejounte Murray, Trey Young, John Collins, and DeAndre Hunter. Uh, DeAndre Hunter all have goals of bringing championships to the ATL. Clint Capella, on the other hand, look what he did. He has his sights on first team all defense and the Eastern Conference Finals. Ugh, that's hilarious. Do you see that, Ramona? Yeah. You see how like everyone's like, championship, win championship, championship, win. And he's like, hold up, let me get these motivations. So based on this, <laughs> Ramona, is this too high, too low, or just right for the Hawks? Well, look, I mean, they were one of the most disappointing teams last year, so you could look at that and say, there's only, you can only go up from there. I mean, they, they went to the Eastern Conference Finals two years ago and they finished 10th last year, so they making that trade for DeJounte Murray, the expectations are definitely higher for them and they need to deliver. Perk? It's about business. It's just right. You know why? Clint Capella is about getting his money. <laughs> he has contract incentives that if he reached the conference finals and the all-defensive team, he get a bigger bag. So it's just right. That's what I'm talking about, Clint. Think about the team goals <laughs> and think about yourself at, at the same time. You're right. We've been in the East, and we can't play this game without thinking about the Los Angeles Lakers. I mean, in I mean, our yes, city. We could. I mean, we could, but you know that won't be right for us, okay? <laughs> Bobby outlined the Lakers projecting them to 43 wins mm -hmm. and in that 7 through 10 play-in range. Bobby's concerns were buy-in from the veterans, which I think they sort of improved on. If AD can get back to an all-NBA level, and that's largely determined on health, and that it's a guard-heavy roster with 11 expiring deals. So, starting with you, Ramona, is that too high for wins, too low, or is it just right? That's just right, and that is talking about a play-in team. Say that again, a play-in team, Los Angeles Lakers, with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Now, I personally think if they stay healthy, they can they can have a better year, but there are a lot of question marks on this team. Note, Brian Windhorst has always talked about their shooting. Um, they have a lot of veterans that are on one-year deals, not always great for team building when guys are thinking about where they're going to get their next contract. But Darvin Ham is emphasizing defense. That's uh, a good, good place to start. Where's the buzzer? That was pretty smooth, though. That was pretty smooth. Yeah. Perk, what do you think about L.A.? Yeah. That, that's too low and it's disrespectful. The Lakers are going to be in the playoffs this year. And, the, so, and one of the main reasons I'm saying that is because of Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis this season is going to remind the world of who the hell he is. And this is why I have him picked as my MVP front runner right wow. now, MVP winner, early prediction. Because I believe Anthony Davis is going to show why his name should be mentioned in the conversation with Giannis Antetokounmpo again. Oh, I, I like out. that. I know that comparison got people going a couple years ago. I, <laughs> I like did that, that a few years ago, Perk. Made him the MVP <laughs> mm -hmm. favorite. I'm on old takes exposed now. Yeah. Oh, it's okay, though. We're being optimistic. <laughs> it's preseason. It's preseason. And that's not the only aspect of the Lakers.